Coming up on Look Today, well, we've got more updates on the heroin and opioid epidemic in the community. I've got details. And the Lake George Winter Carnival starts this Saturday. More on that coming up. And this year's South Glens Falls High School Dance Marathon will be in honor of the late trooper Timothy Pratt. I've got those details. It's all ahead on Look Today. Welcome everyone, I'm Jay Hood Jackson and this is Look Today. Tonight's program, I sit down with Adam Pencil. He's the chairman of the Warren County Libertarian Party. We're joined by Christopher Schmidt. He's from the Washington County Libertarian Party and they're here to talk about the libertarian philosophy and its application in our community. This is part two of our interview. And I also sit down with Tony Garcia. He's a public information officer for the American Legion Post 233 in Glens Falls. He's here to talk about a series of upcoming public forums. Plus, we've got your weather for the Tri-North Counties, but first, these headline stories. Well, in our lead story, the heroin and opioid epidemic is still rampant in our communities. And one of the leading causes to heroin addiction is often attributed to the abuse of painkillers. Heroin becomes the more affordable option when painkiller prescriptions run out. Well, the Prevention Council in Saratoga works closely with other organizations, including the Saratoga Springs Police Department, to combat this issue. Now, on February 15th, the Hometown versus Heroin Addiction Forum will take place in Hudson Falls at BOCES. Well, we spoke to Janine Stuchin. She's the Executive Director of the Prevention Council, Saratoga Springs. Or so often, somebody with addiction will resort to criminal behavior to support what is a behavior they can't stop, the addictive behavior. And to put someone in the jail or uh, criminal justice system is extremely expensive, not very productive for either the community or for the, per the individual, and is very expensive. And we're going to have continuing coverage on this story as we talk to other members of the community leading up to this forum. In other news, well, the Lake George Winter Carnival will start on Saturday at noon. Now, because of the mild winter, some of the traditional events of the carnival will not take place. The reason? The lake's not frozen over. Now, among the events that are canceled include ice diving demonstrations, hockey scrimmages, and helicopter rides. Well, we spoke to Mike Consula. He's the executive director of the Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in addition to the ceremonies, there'll be a chili cook-off in Shepherd Park. Uh, there's going to be bonfires. There's going to be fireworks uh, every Saturday evening. Uh, there'll be hot chocolate uh, displays so where you can, you know, for a minimal fee of $5, you can buy a, a mug and get as much hot chocolate as you want and put all the toppings on it. Uh, there'll be the outhouse races. They'll, they'll take place on the beach. You know, it's a bummer there's no ice, but the Lake George Carnival is really a great winter destination. I like the out-out races myself. Switching from news to weather. Well, today saw some overcast skies. We had some, uh, a lot of sun, too. And we had a chance of snow flurries later on. So let's see how the rest of the week is shaping up. For a more detailed look at our weather, let's head to the Glens Falls Weather Center for a look at your first forecast. Thank you, Jesse. Hope you've all had a wonderful day so far. As we take a look at the forecast, you're going to want to be prepared to bundle back up over the next couple of days. In fact, as we saw the first front a couple of days ago, that one's currently across the Carolinas, back down towards Texas and Louisiana. But a secondary system bringing in just that reinforcing shot of some colder air right now, swinging across New Hampshire and Maine. You can see those overnight lows really tumbling back down the teens. 17 in Albany, 11 in Burlington, single digits in Bay. Bangor, Maine. We're going to continue to watch some extremely cold weather with us over the next 24 hours or so. Expect to still see a few snow showers behind that system with those winds, especially out of the west between 5 to 10, 14 degrees the overnight low. We'll see widespread areas towards the morning with wind chills back down the about 5 to 10 degree range. 27 degrees the eventual daytime high tomorrow. Sunshine doing its best to clear us out somewhat high. 27 and those winds coming around out of the south, but 
becoming about 10 to 15 miles an hour. So out the door tomorrow morning, bundle back up. We'll see limited sunshine. And once again, those wind chills will be back as cold as 5 to 6 degrees at some portions in the morning. So that's really what you're going to prepare for. We'll see that sunshine, as I mentioned, through the afternoon, then a little less sunshine progressively throughout the weekend. But temperatures coming up ever so slightly. One degree warmer Saturday, high 28, 32 degrees Sunday. So right at that freezing mark, still a slight chance at a few snow, snow showers both those afternoons and once again plunging back down to the teens for the overnight lows on Monday night and Tuesday morning waking up in the single digits. So some very cold air still on the way in heading in towards next week. Right now we are going to want to bundle back up for the overnight hours. I'm your meteorologist Brandon Boucher. Now let's get back to you Jesse. Thanks Brand. It looks like winter is coming huh? All right back to the news. Well this year's South Glens Falls High School Dance Marathon will be in honor of Trooper Timothy Pratt. Now, you might remember he lost his life last year in the line of duty. Well, the dance is scheduled to take place March 3rd and 4th, and the event will benefit 29 recipients and 10 community organizations. Now, we're in contact with the organizers of the dance, and we will have more on this in the coming days, including some great on-set interviews. Up next, I sit down with Adam Pencil. He's the chairman of the Warren County Libertarian Party. We're joined by Christopher Schmidt. He's from the Washington County Libertarian Party. They're here. They talk about the libertarian philosophy and its application to our community. This is part two of our interview this week. Plus, I also sit down with Tony Garcia. He's public information officer for the American Legion Post 233 in Glens Falls. He's here. They talk about an upcoming series of public forums. But first, if you see news happening, you want to share a story idea, how about join us for an interview? Give us a call on the hotline. The number is 798-8000. Well, that's all the time we have for this edition of Look Today. A couple of lookouts. Uh, one, a kind of serious note, but when we were talking to Janine Stuchin today, she happened to mention that in 2013, there were five survivable overdoses a week. Five a week. But guess what? 2016, there were 30 a week. Now, just do the math. 30 overdoses a week. And you tell me about this opioid and heroin epidemic that we've got. Um, we're going to have more on this topic in the coming weeks, including interviews with the police department. So please stay tuned for that, and please be aware of it. Uh, the second lookout has to go to the guy I met this morning, Tony Garcia. That was the interview I did today. He's from the American Legion post in, in Glens Falls. We just had the best conversation. It was about the flag and about patriotism and freedom. And I know it sounds corny, but it isn't. It's the basic tenet of our freedom to respect the flag and the veterans. And uh, Tony really exemplified that spirit. So second lookout goes to him. Okay, one last one. The Saratoga Chamber Players, a very interesting group of musicians, performing Sunday at Filene uh, Center at Skidmore College. Uh, my wife and I have been to some of these performances. It's a very intimate setting. It's a wonderful way to hear chamber music. So Saratoga Chamber Players this Sunday, Filene Hall at Skidmore College. Okay, that's it. Tonight on Look TV, it's sold. That's our call-in auction program, great coins and estate jewelry. Don't forget, you can tune in tomorrow night for the stories that matter to you. Good night, everyone.